Um, and I know Gina has this meeting is being recorded that she was going to pull up, which it actually will help with our introductions. If Gina, you could pull that slide up. Um, let's see if I can. Um, and then that is awesome that you guys are willing to introduce yourselves um, and kind of go through what you're using today. Um, how many people could we have on the call today, Natalia? Um, Nine, nine, ten. Awesome. Okay. Hi. Do you see the screen with the PowerPoint presentation title? Yep. All right. Perfect. Awesome. I want to make sure I had the right thing up. Yep. All right. So then here's us. So I'm Tina Powley. I am um, an adult nurse practitioner. I practiced in urology for um, 28 years totally as a nurse, 19 years of those um, as a nurse practitioner. I just joined Hollister about um, 18 months ago to be a clinical resource manager. Um, what that means is I am basically the clinical educator. So I help uh, train on product, not only the sales team, other clinicians, um, do webinars, um, provide education for clinicians um, and patients. And um, I'm very passionate about um, bladder health and am happy to be here to speak with you all today. Thanks, Gina. Um, my name's Erica Canella. Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Good. Good. No complaints. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I am here in Mendham, New Jersey. I'm actually the continence care specialist uh, with Hollister, um, covering Northern Jersey, and I cover parts of New York. I go up to the Albany market. Um, I've been with Hollister for seven years. I did wound care and made my way over to the, the continence care side of the business. And um, I work very closely as a local representative with the rehab hospitals throughout my territory. So um, okay. some of you guys on the call may have been to some of these facilities. Some of my bigger um, customers are Kessler Institute in New Jersey, JFK Rehab, which is part of the Hackensack Meridian system there, and um, Helen Hayes, which is in up, up in West Havistro, New York. And I used to have Burke Rehab. Um, and so I really, really love um, working with the spinal cord population. It's been really near, to, near and dear to my heart for the past five years as a continence care rep. Um, and then we also do work with the urology offices um, in our territory as well, because a lot of times um, spinal cord patients will start at the rehab and then they're ending up with a urologist. And so we do wanna educate them on the products and services that we offer at Hollister. So um, yeah, that's who I am and I'll turn it over to Paul. So um, my name is Paul. I've uh, been in urology now for hard to believe over 10 years now um, in a few different roles. I used to work at Bard, now I work at uh, Hollister. Um, I cover the five boroughs in all of Long Island. Um, I work really closely with um, Mount Sinai Rehab, uh, NYU Rusk. Um, you know, we're pretty involved with uh, the United Spinal Chapter in, in the New York City area. Um, and we also work really closely with uh, ICS slash um, uh, VNS. Um, so we really try to make sure that, you know, not only are you guys getting taken care of when you first get discharged from the facility, but making sure that you don't fall through any cracks down the line. Yeah, that's pretty much it about me. So Natalia, did you want to um, start with yourself and go through the people on the on the call? Yeah, yeah I can do that for sure. Um, so I'm Natalia, uh, 16 years injured, uh, C67. Um, I had an indwelling catheter in for three years before I decided to have the surgery, uh, the Mitrofenov, and. Um, 
now I go through there. I don't have any issues with um, any leaking at all. Um, and it's minimal infections. If I'm staying, you know, sanitary and doing what I need to do, it's minimal infections. And I use the Vapro 16 male whole system catheter. Yeah. Um, let's see who's after me. Lily, go on. I'm Lily. I'm a T5, T6 complete uh, spinal cord injury. Um, I've been straight cathing for 20 years now. And I use, um, it's a 14 French. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's considered a male. It's like this guy. And it's all I've known. So it's like when I left the hospital, this is what they taught me. And one years later, I'm still doing the same thing. Oh, okay. Is that a regular catheter or a closed system? I can't see it. Great. Regular. Okay. Regular. Non-lubricated. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and that happens a lot, you know, especially, um, you know, if, if patients have been, you know, trained on how to use a catheter a long time ago, in the subsequent last few years, there's been a lot of advances. Um, and, you uh, there's not a lot of awareness about what is available um, and what the latest and greatest um, products well, are on the market. And I would say that it's it's definitely um, up to you guys to figure it out because a lot of times the clinicians in these offices, they're not focused on the IC space because <laughs> they don't make any money off of it, to be honest. Um, they make money off their surgeries. They make money off of those kind of things. So they're not really so focused on what the newest intermittent catheters are in the market. I mean, I was just at an expo down here in Miami and um, we actually stopped by uh, Coloplast, I think that's their name, and they sent us a bunch, a bunch of different samples. I was actually just showing the uh, ladies here some of the things that I had and it's like, they're like, how are you like capping like this without any lubricant and this? I'm like, cause they told me once you go home, you don't need to do everything that we do here in the hospital. Mm. And they're like, you know, you're damaging your yourself this way. And I'm like, working for 20 years, so I don't know. But they yeah. did send me a bunch of lubricated ones. And those were, I'm not gonna lie, those were kind of weird to use. They're very slippery and I'm slippery. just like, it's hard to get a grip on them. So. And as we go through, I still have we'll some more. I'm, I'm trying to give it a yeah. try. I'm not trying to like write them off yet. So I am well, trying with some of our, we have one that is similar, but it has a really nice gripper and we'll uh, show you an example of that later that, um, yeah, the hydrophilic are super slippery. And so if you don't have a good gripper to hold onto, so you're not touching the catheter itself, it is, you're going to slip and slide all over it. And so it is going to be frustrating. And so you're going to want to go back to what you know and comfortable with. It's, it's, Trust me, as a clinician, if a patient came in and said, everything was fine, everything is working good, if it ain't broke, you don't fix it. And so I, I can understand why you're still using it 20 years later. Um, part of the reason now is that I'm trying to educate those clinicians to, to um, know what's out there and to ask those questions to their patients to see if maybe something might be better for you. Okay, so let's see who we have next. Kathy, Kathy, just explain, but go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, hi, I'm Kathy, I'm a T9L2. I'm going than almost three, four years of my injury. I have a um, super pubic indwelling fat in catheter. So I don't care, I tried it, I couldn't do it. So I just gave up on it. Okay. Um, so she has a super pubic. Um, Lori? Um, hi, I'm Lori. Um, T9 complete for 22 years. Um, I use a 16 French catheter, um, straight catheter minute. So, you know, we're talking about, I use them, I don't use lubricated catheters either. And I'm interested, so my insurance is Medicare, Medicaid, and I'm interested in 
how insurance companies like will or were not, will not pay for uh, pre-lubricated catheters. Lori, where are you so, located? Uh, I'm in California. Yeah, so in, uh, well, Medicare across the board will cover hydrophilic catheters. They actually don't differentiate between whether it's an uncoated or like a plain catheter and a hydrophilic catheter. Um, so that's actually something we run into a lot. A lot of times supply companies, um, they make more money if they give you a basic catheter. So a lot of times they may not um, be as vocal about letting people know that, hey, there might be something better, a little more sophisticated because for them, that's money coming out of their pocket. But obviously that's not fair to the patients whatsoever. And that's kind of where we come in um, with our patient care programs at your start to try to advocate um, for our end users. And Lori, um, who is your supplier today? Uh, Shield. Got it. Right. What part of California are you in? I am in Monterey County. Okay. Oh, Lily's in Florida. Did she mention that? I forgot. Yeah, Miami. I heard her say that. No, she's in Hollywood. She uh, don't let her lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> until oh, she's so back here in New in York, I Hollywood, Florida. No, yes, until so she's back in New York, I have no respect for anywhere you are that isn't right here next to me in New York, Lily. Mm -mm. No, thank you. It's really gorgeous <laughs> outside. I don't know how you want me to leave this place. And right she now. calls herself like a Yankees fan. I can't believe you. <laughs> hey, they do do their spring training down there. Oh, well, now we're now we're deep. We're into the season, so there goes that. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're gone. Yeah. Was yeah. Now I have to deal with the Knicks and the Heat here and the Heat fans. <sighs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, Sylvie, babe. Go on, Sylvie. My name is Silly. Um, I was born with my disability, and although I um, have scoliosis and loriosis of the spine, um, I I don't cast. So. Okay. Okay. Nice. Let's see who's after Silly. Lauren. Hi, um, I'm in Texas. I'm a, a one complete um, since 1985 and I straight cast for like a month after I got injured and then I realized I could pee voluntarily with like some Valsalva. But um, now that I'm older and having some stress incontinence, my doctor is recommending a urethral sling, which would of course mean no more Valsalva. So I may have to go back to straight cath if I have that procedure, but right now I'm not cathing. Lauren, can you explain what a Valsalva is? It's where you generate intra-abdominal pressure and it sort of pushes the urine out. So I can like initiate the stream, but then I don't really fully empty usually unless I do the Valsalva. Valsalva is the name of the pushing process? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, cool. All right, good to know. All right, um, thank you. Uh, Naomi Dahl? Hi, I'm Naomi. I'm in New York. Um, I have a T12 to L2 incomplete injury, and um, I do use a straight cath. I'm actually pretty much exactly in Lily's situation. It's a 14 French. I'm not using a lubricated one. I'm using the same catheters I've always used, although I have been experimenting. I, I reached out to Hollister maybe about a month ago, and I got a few samples to try the hydrophilic. Similarly, I'm sort of on the fence about it. I'm not I, it just feels kind of weird and wet to me, which is a little bothering me, but um, but I'm not like against trying out new things. Um, one thing I am interested in, and this is something that um, I, it's a little bit silly, maybe like the only difference between what I use and what Lily showed us is I don't like the little green funnel at the end. And it's mm -hmm. kind of a small point, but I am concerned about like waste and using too much plastic and packaging and all that stuff. And so I would like, and I'm interested in just weight in general because I walk with crutches. So everything I carry, I'm kind of carrying on my back. So if I go away for a weekend, even though the weight of a catheter seems negligible, when you start packing a lot of them up together or if I'm going on a week trip, that sort of starts adding a lot of weight. So I prefer um, minimal packaging 
and preferably without that green funnel, just to make everything sort of more streamlined. Yeah, no, that's great feedback. Um, you know, so, so you're using the only like the street cap with like the little gripper on it. It doesn't even have a gripper. It's just um, it's just um, the coloplast, like the most simple, cheap one you can get, which is probably why I started getting it. But I've gotten used to it. Um, it's got. I don't have one near me, or else oh, I yeah, it's like the mentor. I think is like their basic, uh, the, the basic coloplast one. Possibly, yes. Um, is it the, the uh, short, short length? Yeah, the okay. short one. It's the yeah. It doesn't thing. have a funnel on it. Yeah, there's there's one that doesn't have a funnel. I think it has an option, like when I ordered, I could get it with a funnel or without, and I just choose the one without, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this is our version of the, um, I don't know if you can see this that clearly. Um, so this is like the Hollister version. I don't know if they showed you this at Mount Sinai or not. No, I was 25 years ago and it was at, um, at NYU Rusk, so I haven't seen anything mm -hmm. new. Oh, okay, I got you. We're, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna go through all the products later. Right. Um, let's continue to probably get through the just to the folks on the call. Okay, so then it would be Michelle with one L. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I had a benign tumor removed removed from my spine twice. Um. And I self cath with the said with coliplast was actually a Cure Ultra 14 French. Mm -hmm. And it does, it's really small and it's lightweight, but it does have that funnel at the end that you were talking about, Naomi. And this one is pre lubricated. Um, and it is um, now that I'm thinking, as you mentioned, and like when you're going, when I'm going away or even my pocketbooks, I because they it's so compact to me. Like they can all just kind of stick in with each other, but I, I use a mirror. So I do have a, a small mirror that I do travel with. And then going for the weekend, like I swear, if I am if I know I'm going away for like just the weekend, I still will pack no less than 30 catheters. Mm -hmm. Always, I would rather have more than what I need than to have to figure out how to improvise um, if I don't have it, uh, if I don't have any catheters with me. But um, I've been using a catheter consistently, I want to say, probably for the better part of about 25 years wow. or so, 25, 26. My surgery was in 93. I was using it for a while and then I was able to stop. And then it was like, why am I consistently getting UTIs? And I was like, oh, let me just drink more cranberry juice. But I don't like cranberry juice by itself. And cranberry and vodka, although it's good, <laughs> doesn't really help with UTIs and medication. So um I'm back to NYU I, I'm treated at Rusk and it's like I now have to straight cap okay and yes. so that's what I've been doing and then trying out these different products throughout the years and last year I was introduced my, my neuro urologist introduced me to the Cure Ultra and it's been great for me it's been great your neurologist introduced you. Neurologist. Neurologist. Euro. Oh, neurologist. Euro. Yeah, my urologist. Uh, Tiffany, did we do Tiffany already? No, right? No. Okay. Hello, I'm Tiffany in I'm Sac I'm in Sacramento, California. I'm a C56 complete. Um, I don't self cath anymore because the my pouch is for less of a broken, it's just too small. So I have a indwelling catheter and it had to, uh, I went from a 16 to a 19, no, 20 French by Rusk, R-U-S-C-H. So that's what I'm dealing with now and contemplating getting the stoma bag in my belly. But for now, I have the catheter, so which is always interesting. Um, K C O C. I still don't know this name, or if this person is here. There you go. That would be me, uh, um, Kristen. Uh, Twenty years, a uh, spinal cord injury. Um, T. They consider me a T ten, T twelve based on function, but. I had um, 
a dermoid cyst and a spinal cord at T6 through T3 through six that they took out that made me a spinal cord injury. Um, and I currently am, I had surgery in the fall. I went 19, 20 years without needing to calf. Now I'm having to, to calf. And so I'm new back to all this process. Okay. So what are you using now, Kristen? Currently I'm using, I'm still trying to look, be able to do it by myself. So I've got the traditional um, cure, whatever, whatever the, the basic with the green funnel catheters with the lubricating packet. And I've had recurrent uh, UTIs since, since the surgery and since the calfing was added. So also I'm having to do like, like a modified sterile procedure. So I guess like I have to do the betadine and that, you know, that was added to help prevent or help reduce the risk of the infection. So. Mm. Gotcha. That's where I'm at. <laughs> I'm open to all suggestions. <laughs> I have to do the same whole thing with the iodine and the sanitizer and the lube. And it's like, I feel like I'm preparing for surgery every time. So pretty yeah. much. <laughs> and Miguelina. You're there. I think that's all after Miguelina. Did I hear Fran? Okay. Well, Miguelina might be occupied, so we can get started then. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing, um, you know, what you guys are doing today. Um, sounds like we may have some great options for you based on some of the situations that you shared. And, um, you know, we're going to today go through just briefly a little bit about who Hollister is. Um, then we're going to go through the different products that we have. I think the biggest focus. Um, sounds like there are a lot of straight users, so it's. I'm really glad that we will be able to talk about some of our straight catheter products, but we also have a closed system called Vapro, and that was the one that Natalia is using today that might be a great option for some of you guys, so we'll go through those products, and then we are going to talk to you briefly about Secure Start, which is our free patient support um, service that's incredible, actually, and um, I know the program has really helped Nat Natalia um, through the years with emergency type situations and things like that. So we can talk a little bit about that at the end. Um, and next slide. And so Hollister, so I know some of you guys, as you were sharing your products, we heard Cure, we heard Coloplast, we heard some other brands. Were before this call, would you say anybody here in the call was familiar with Hollister as like a catheter company? I'm seeing head shake, no. I, I, I know of the company. I just don't, I've never used the product, but yeah. Natalia, you knew of the company because you're using our products, but yeah. Um, anyone else on the call? I tried them. I called Secure Start about a month ago, so I tried some free samples. Oh, so I that's was right. There. That's right. You did mention that. Um, awesome. And how did you hear about uh, Secure Start? Uh, from Natalia. <laughs> don't ask me how i heard about it because it was through jared <laughs> jared is our old new york city rep that was before paul's time um awesome well um so we've actually been in business for over 100 years which is like really rare these days so um we're really proud of that we've been around for a long time um we have a great reputation and we're a global company. So believe it or not, we have um, a presence in Asia, Europe, huge presence, especially with the continents care um, business in Europe. We're in North America, South America, um, and we manufacture, we make uh, continents care. So we make the catheters, the intermittent catheters. We make leg bag uh, accessories as well. And we will quickly talk about those after the catheters. So for those that are using an indwelling, we have one of the best leg bags on the market. It's phenomenal. It's comfortable. 
Um, you only get one or two of these a month. And so we have a fantastic one. Um, we have tubing and um, other types of continence products. We have ostomy supplies. I heard someone talk about possibly getting um, a urostomy. Yep, so we have, um, we're, we're the global leader for ostomy products. And then we also have some critical care products. And, um, and then the, the service side of our business, which again is the secure start. And we'll talk a little bit about that at the end. Next slide. And so our mission, and I know a lot of companies have missions and um, I just want you to know that because we are employee owned, we're not like publicly traded. Um, we really live our mission and I live this day in and day out. And I mentioned that about some of the rehabs that I work with. And I really am out there to get these products in the hands of clinicians and end users because I hope to make your lives more rewarding and dignified um, through using our products. And it's not always going to make sense, but we have some great you know, products that have truly impacted people's life and knowing that and seeing that. And Jean is going to show you a little video that's about two and a half minutes long that talks a little bit through that. Next slide. So intermittent catheter benefits. I think intermittent catheter is the gold standard today in a rehab. Um, it is the um, goal to transition a patient with a spinal cord injury to intermittent catheter. It's not always an option. Um, but the reason why it is the gold standard and it's the, you know, where doctors want to go is because it lowers risk of infections. Um, it safeguards renal functions. It gives you that independence, the dignity, the improved quality of life, not having to, you know, have to deal with a leg bag, not having to deal with something in you all the time and having that sexual freedom. If, if that's still a part of your life and maybe, you know, you're out and about and, doing sports and things like that. And so through intermittent catheterization, you, you can have a little bit more of that independence. Um, and again, the goal is to get you to as much independence as possible. So those are some of the benefits of IC versus, you know, indwelling. Next slide. Um, so reimbursement, um, I think a couple, couple people had questions around this and, you know, really basic, I'm going to talk about how catheters are covered. Um, it's a durable medical equipment, essentially, DMA. Um, and you can get these through suppliers. And some of you guys have cheered some of your suppliers, Shields, you know, ABC, I heard. Um, and basically, you these companies bill as three different HICPIC codes. They, they, they're, um, HICPIC codes are A4351, which is a straight tip. An A4352 is a coude tip, and this is very rare for females. Um, it's more, you know, used in a situation where the prostate is enlarged and they need that curved tip to get through that that area. Um, and then the last code is A4353, which is a closed system. And so, three different codes. Um, I heard a lot of people are using the straights, which is that first code, and then some are using the closed system and Typically, the straight is the easiest to get. It's the lowest reimbursement. So insurance is going to pay less for a straight in A4351 versus an A4353. It's more expensive. And so sometimes, because it's more money to get a closed system, they're going to have different requirements. And New York, you know, I, I, it seems like there's a lot of people all over the country. But in New York, there are some challenges with getting the closed system or getting a full allotment. Um, and I'm going to go to the next slide and let Paul kind of talk a little bit through New York. Although after hearing from each and every one of you, I realized that there are people from all over. So maybe we don't need to spend a ton of time here. But um, Paul, if you want to just kind of walk through some recent changes that just happened at the end of 2022. And we can't hear you. I don't know if you're talking right now. Paul? All right. Sorry, guys. I'll make this quick. Um, so basically, as of April 1st of 2023, um, New York State Medicaid just increased um, the reimbursement for all categories of cath uh, cat uh, all categories of catheters considerably. Um, and what this means for you guys is that you're going to have a lot more options. 
Um, you know, because before, if you're only getting 82 cents per catheter, uh, a supplier is, is going to be looking at the pennies and being like, we're going to get you on the most basic thing possible. Nothing that's pre-lubricated, no premium brands. Um, same with Kude. And the biggest one of all is actually closed system. They went from $3 per catheter up to five sixty eight. So for um, any of you who are using a closed system catheter that say like isn't a vapro, but like a more standard um, or older style closed system catheter, and you're interested in trying vapro or a newer version of a closed system catheter, um, this would be a great opportunity because there's a lot more money available. And um, we can match you with a supplier who would be willing to provide you with the premium product. Um, in terms of uh, Medicaid, the uh, requirements for documentation for New York State Medicaid are actually not that um, difficult. Basically, if you want it, you can get it. it you know, it's uh, pretty straightforward. It's really more Medicare that's going to give you a harder time. But, um, but we work very closely with, with your clinicians, so, um, and we're constantly educating them on what the requirements are for Medicare. Um, and if, if you have Medicaid as your primary, um, it's actually gonna be rather easy for you to get a closed system kit or, or any other kind of catheter for that matter. So um, any questions about that? Yeah, and just to um, add on, in, in most Medicare states, to get the closed system, you're, if you have straight Medicare, you're going to need to have two UTIs. So typically, we do run into issues if someone is discharging from a rehab with their spinal cord injury on Medicare as their primary, um, because they don't have those UTIs typically just yet. And so sometimes they're only allowed to get a straight. And then once they get those two UTIs, then they can qualify for a closed system. Um, um, I'm sorry, is that two, like two per year or? That's a great yeah. question. So it's yeah, two it's in the calendar year and they do need to be documented. And again, this is where you as a patient um, and sometimes if you have a good supplier will help guide you, you know, on what you need in terms of documentation. Um, you could just go to your doctor and say, you know, I need X, Y, Z, and they'll do it for you. Um, so it's it's not hard, but it's just more knowing what you need and getting the documentation piece of it. Michelle, you had a question? I do, thank you. So I actually have Medicare, Empire Blue Medicare. I'm in New York as my primary insurance. And so I've been using the culture, the Cure Ultra for the past year. And my monthly payments, like they pay for, I guess, the bulk of it, but I get, um, I guess, 180 in a in a month's time. So I have to my my out of pocket cost is I think it's 36 dollars and 72 cents. So, am I understanding you to say that Medicare is supposed to cover it in full, or am I still responsible for that balance of 36 and let's say 37 dollars? You know, so Medicare will cover the 80%. Um, and then if you have a secondary, they're supposed to cover the last 20%. I don't have a secondary. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's usually. Right, yeah, that's okay. Okay. That makes sense. Got it. Thank you. No problem. So I think we can go on to the next slide. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about our Vapro 100% no touch intermittent catheters. So with this Vapro uh, catheter, it does give you 100% no-touch protection with a protective tip, cap, and sleeve. So Vivi, we're talking about how you were getting the recurrent UTIs and they were making you do the betadine and try to do everything as aseptic as possible at home. This is an aseptic technique, so you do not need that betadine. You do not need the sterile gloves. You don't need all of that extra protection because this catheter gives you all of that protection. So the protective tip, it um, protects you from inserting the bacteria that's in the first 
15 millimeters of the urethra. So even if you wipe off your urethra with, you know, a wipe, um, any kind of soap and water, whatever, you still can't get all of that bacteria that sits right at the opening. And so with the protective tip, that gets inserted first into the urethra, then the catheter passes through. So any of that bacteria that's right there in the inside of the urethra doesn't get drawn into the bladder. And just think about every time you insert a catheter, you're pulling up bacteria into that bladder, whether, you know, even if you're using the betadine, you're still, you still have that bacteria. So that tip first protects you from the bacteria in the tip of the urethra. Um, the protective cap, which isn't shown in this picture, but I'll show you. Um, if something would happen and you would um, drop the catheter out of the package onto the table or the floor, as long as that cap's on, none of the catheter parts are going to touch the floor and bacteria. And I'll get a sample out here in a minute um, and show you exactly what it looks like. And the protective sleeve is a barrier for the catheter. So you can actually touch anywhere on that catheter and it's like a glove for the catheter. So you can touch anywhere on the catheter and you're not touching the catheter itself. So we did a study and it shows that intermittent catheters with protective tip reduced E. coli epistalis transfer into um, the urethral model tests compared to those without a tip. So it protects 100% reduction. Another study with the sleeve shows that even the most microorganisms, such as a virus, does not pass through that sleeve itself. So that's why I said you could drop it, you cannot wash your hands. Anything that's on the ground or your fingers are not going to touch that catheter through that sleeve. And people who use this catheter were surveyed. They reported a high level of satisfaction with using the Vapro catheters. It helped them overcome certain um, issues that they had, such as UTIs. Some re participants reported that they gave them a positive effect of their quality of life. They felt it was hygienic and very easy to use. And 50% participated re participants reported less frequent UTIs after changing to the Vapro product. 93% of Vapro catheter users say that with the Vapro catheters, they feel protected against infections. And what we really like about this picture is that anything you touch, the cell phone, your pet, car keys, everything that's on your fingers is not going to touch that catheter because of that protective tip and sleeve. So originally the protective tip was the blue and you can see that was a little bigger, you know, kind of scary looking. Um, users did recommend that, you know, maybe we could try to get a little smaller. So it's more ergonomically shaped. Um, wanted it transparent so you could see through it easier. However, we were able to change the tip on the straight catheter, but for any patients who need to use the coude or the curved tip, um, because of that curved tip, we still have to use the larger blue tip. The uh, vapor catheters are made with an integrated bag. And let me just pull one out and show you what I'm talking about. And I wanna make sure that you can see. So Hollister wants to make all of our products as easy as possible for our, our patients to use them. So it's a very small package. It fits in your pocket. Here's the front of it. 
and it's very easy to use. I can just use my pinky and pull, and then the catheter, the bag is open. Pull out the catheter in here. You can see I can touch it anywhere, and I'm not touching the catheter itself. This is the protective cap that I was talking about. It covers the tip, so that way, if you drop this anywhere or touch it anywhere, you're, again, not touching the catheter. Now, this is our closed system with the bag. So you can see that there's a little strap. What I do is just pop it open. It's very easy to open. And when you get this first, you're going to feel it's wet. That's just our hydration method. We use water. And we want it to be wet. It's that way we know the catheter is very slippery. If you get any of this water on you, it's not going to stain because, like I said, it is water. So you can see the bag will hold a liter and it has really clear numbering systems. So that way you can, if you have to measure for your doctor for whatever reason, you can see that you can measure out the urine very easily. Up at the top here, there are, it's very, um, and I can't think of the word I'm or I'm wanting to say. Erica, Paul, help me out here. Um, um, kind of like a seal, like a vacuum shield. So that way the urine, whenever it goes into the bag, and I apologize, my brain is, is not functioning 100% this morning. Um, so it's an anti-reflux. So when after the urine's in the bag, if you lay it on the ground, it's not going to go back up into the catheter itself. Now, as you can see, here's the whole sleeve. It's protecting the whole catheter. And then you take the cap off, and here is the protective tip. You insert the tip into the urethra, and you pass the catheter through into the bladder. When you're finished, pull the catheter out, goes back into the tip. If you need to collect a urine sample for your doctor, or you just want to drain the bag, an easy tear has an automatic stop, so you can't tear all the way through. There's a handle and a knob at the bottom. You can pour into a container into the toilet. So I'm gonna stop you for one second, Gina. Um, so this is a closed system catheter with a bag. Um, having a bag, maybe it sounded like a lot of you guys don't even have a catheter with a bag, so it may not be something that you even need. Um, so Gina is going to show you, we just launched a new product. That is the Vapro, everything she just said without a bag. So if you just want the sleeve, the tip and the catheter without a bag, there you go. Um, we do have that as an option now. And it does have the funnel. Most of the catheters are gonna have a funnel. It's just easier to angle and pour into the toilet with the longer catheter. Now, again, this is considered a closed system. So those of you who've had numerous UTIs, this is considered an aseptic technique. So you are getting all the protection of the betadine. If you're using gloves, if you're using any other kind of protection, this will give you all of that protection from those recurrent UTIs, okay? So again, you can see it's the same. Catheter comes through, straight tip has all the protective features without the bag. We also have a catheter just like this with protective tip and sleeve. That's the per 50 day. Now some patients, after they've had surgery, they might have, the female patients may have um, a change in their anatomy, which allows the curved feature to pass easier into the bladder. And so just so you can see what a curved tip looks like, again, the same protective tip, same sleeve, but then here you have that little curved tip. As you can see, it goes up a little bit and it just can help go at, to, to follow the path of the anatomy easier. It's used mainly in men with enlarged prostate. They have structural disease, um, scarring, um, after surgery, but some women who have uh, 
prolapse of their bladder, if they have um, scar tissue or after surgery. And sometimes, you know, with those slings, depending on if there's any extra surgery, you know, scar tissue that adheres, you might need that curved tip. Um, and then so just, here, um, just to add one little thing about the different products. So we do have a lot of people who use straight and then they use a certain allotment of Vapro plus because, or pocket, I should say pocket, um, because, you know, they want to calf with the bag attached in cer certain like environments. And so like, if they're out, you know, at, at work during the day, they want to have the bag, you know, depending on life circumstances and your suppliers should be able to work with you on those kind of split orders and things like that, if you tell them to. So and then the catheter, the integrated uh, catheter with the bag does come in the shorter female length if you so would like a shorter length. Um, however, I think most uh, women feel that having that extra length in the catheter with the bag um, works better for them, but it is available. And so the next slide just talks about the um, straight catheter with no bag that's still a, considered a closed system because of the protective features. And we just, again, to highlight that it's easy to use, easy to open. We've got the collection bag. All of that's right there that can fit into your pocket. It's discreet. You can put it in your backpack, a pocket, um, anywhere. People aren't going to know that you have this big long catheter bag or catheter packaging. Um, again, hydration, sterile water doesn't stain. Um, you can get it with or without the bag. And here is a short video that talks about. You know, let me get this going here. What a, a patient testimonial that I referred to earlier, where um, patients going to share their experience of using vapor. Um, sorry, this is on YouTube. It is. Let's get the ad. There we go. To the full screen. In here. Nope. So you. No, there's no video or sound. You're not getting anything? No. Okay, hold on. On Zoom, there when you go to share, you have to share with audio. Oh, sorry. Let me see. Like it's uh, when you first go to share. Stop share. Uh, and share. Let's see. No, I'm not seeing it. When you hit that share screen and then yep. it, it doesn't say share with. Oh, here's share sound. Sorry. All right. I can actually. Now, can you see in here? Yes. My name is Ben Hasselman. I live in Napier, New Zealand. I am 38 years old and married with one young son, nine years old, Harry. My wife Sarah and I were living in Northern Ireland five years ago when I broke my back at a uh, workplace accident. The first product they got me to try, which was the Vapro Plus Pocket. Straight away, it was very intuitive to pick up and, and use. Throughout trying other products, it, there's a lot of break this, twist that, tear here, clip this on, and that just didn't suit my lifestyle at all. Whereas the Vapro Plus Pocket, it's tear once, open, and very easy to use. Accessibility for someone in a wheelchair, it's a bit of a joke. You know that the, the bathroom's not going to suit or your wheelchair can't get in there or you can't get over that step. 
for my lifestyle, trying to be as social as possible, the best part about it is the mobility and discreetness of it. I can actually use these a lot of the time without people noticing if I just duck away to a corner. Really big thing for myself and for I suppose other wheelchair users, everything is contained in that one unit. It's, it's all covered and the tip's very nice and easy to use and discreet. You keep your, keep your germs away from yourself. I'm involved with Para Babington, playing for uh, a New Zealand team over in Australia mostly. With the Vapro Plus Pocket, I've got my consumables with me. We do quite a bit of travelling. As soon as someone in a wheelchair needs to move on an airplane, everybody in the airplane knows that that person's moving. The Vapro Plus Pocket makes it possible for me to stay at my seat and do my business discreetly. A big part of our life is here in Ahariri, along the waterfront here. It's really nice to have a really good community of mates around us here. So we get out and socialise a lot with them. <laughs> if you've got less to stress about, you're going to be happier. That's the end of the story. And this product does that for me. Vapro Plus Pocket is, is 10 out of 10 for me. It checks all the boxes. Make sure we got the right screen going. Okay. And next we're gonna talk about our Anthony Chic intermittent catheters. And I just wanna let you know, Paul, I'll give you a time check. It's 355. So we we will try to go through these next few products a little quicker. Paul, you're muted. Sorry, I'm in the city and there's always like car noises, so that's my fault. Um, but yeah, so for those of you who are using uh, a female length short catheter, um, we do have a pretty cool option. It's called Infina Sheet. Um, and right off the bat, you can tell the design is such that it really could be a lot of different things, anything from a makeup container, a tampon, um, a lot of different things. So it doesn't scream like, oh, it's a medical product. So it's discreet in that regard. Um, another nice thing with this product is it's really easy to open. All you have to do is a little thicker here. And that lets you know, that's basically how you flip it open. And then the catheter, you just take it out. Um, it's pre-lubricated and it's just a water-based um, lubricant. So it's not like some of the other products on the market where it may have like a saline in um, the lubri lubricant, which can kind of stain your clothes. So that's one benefit of this. Um, and then another nice benefit is that for those of you who are um, environmentally conscious, you can actually recycle the case here if you want to, and then uh, dispose of the catheter separate. Another benefit is that if you're out and about and there's not a great place to dispose of the catheter, there's actually a resealable case here. And this little O-ring actually holds in any moisture or lubricant. So you basically just put it back in, close it, and you can put it back in your bag and you don't have to worry about it leaking anywhere. Um, and some of our users also like this feature um, when they're home because um, some of the feedback we received was that when they were, you know, putting used catheters in the garbage next to their toilet, it was kind of giving an odor to the bathroom. But if you dispose of it with this um, casing on it, it'll hold in any of those odors. Um, so those are the main benefits. Um, of this, um, of Infina Chic. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And I just wanna add one more thing about the recycling piece of it. So we we are as a company, one of our initiatives is to reduce waste. Um, Naomi, that is a concept that is near and dear to my heart. I know you mentioned how important that was to you. And um, 
unfortunately you cannot get away completely from a, de a medical device that's you know something that is uh, disposable you have to use them over and over again so we're focused on making our products with as least packaging okay. um, and product waste as possible and so with the new recyclable case we have um, very strong oh, here's a piece about it right here that pink case is 100% recyclable with your household recyclables. So if it is important for you to recycle, that piece can go out. Unfortunately, the material of the catheter itself is, is not a plastic that is recyclable, um, but the case is, and that's, that's really, really a big piece. And we're really pushing that and we're talking about it. And in the, in the boxes, it says it very big. It says it on the outside of the case, there's a little label. Um, so I just wanna emphasize that, that it's very important to us as a company and we're, we're getting there more and more every day. Um, so, I have a question about that one. Um, if my insurance is covering the Vapro closed system, will it cover this one as well? Or is this one a little? Um, yeah, it would. This is, it's, this is it's a that... straight, this is a straight catheter. It's an 84351. Remember those hick fit codes? Um, oh, okay. and, and this is going to be um, absolutely, especially now that in your particular area, New York State Medicaid or and care rates have gone up. Mm -hmm. um, you should have no issues getting the oh, yeah. and chic. And a lot yeah. of our um, our users, a lot of times, what they'll do is in cer certain circumstances, they'll use Vapro. And then in other circumstances, they'll use a Phoenix Heek or one of our other products. Because right. you can actually do split orders where okay. it's like, hey, yeah, for like for one, some situations you want one, others you want another. This way you get the best of both worlds. Oh, great, great, great. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to super quick go through only catheters. Guys, this is our last basic straight catheter. It is still ready to use out of the packaging. There's no water session to break. Um, it's ready to go. Um, we just improved our packaging. So up top, it's a peel apart. Just like in this picture, you just take the two holes and peel the packaging apart. We have it in a male and a female length, a 16 inches and an eight inch length. Um, again, we reduce the, the packaging like thickness. So it's actually lighter packaging now. Um, and it's the same hydrophilic technology on the other products. It's a water-based, um, very lubricious, and we have very, very smooth eyelets. Um, I guess, why would you use only versus in, uh, like the Infina sheet? They're both straight catheters. Um, I'd say the only female, um, if you guys can see it, is I guess the, I'm sorry, the Infina sheet is a little more discreet. So if you're really looking for that discreet packaging, um, the only female length is slightly longer. So if you need a little in, extra length and the Infina sheet is not long enough, only female length could be good. But if you want the 18 inch long straight catheter, we do have that as well. And I wanna point out really quickly on this product, we talked a little bit about how it can be slippery. And Gina um, emphasized earlier that we have a gripper on our male length or the six, I shouldn't say male because female is them too, but 16 inch only has this gripper. It sits up on a docking station. And what this is there for is to, prevent you from touching the catheter, but also there as a gripper for that very purpose of it being slippery. So when you take it out of the package, you grab it by this, this gripper and you would bring it down, give yourself a couple of inches of leeway, just pinch it like a pencil and you, you're you holding on to the catheter with the gripper. You go to put it into the urethra and it's giving you that grip. And again, it's giving you that protection. So something to consider um, the only with a gripper. It's our 16 inch catheter. And a lot of clinicians that have felt it, remember the pencil um, little grippers that you used to put on your pencils. Um, so the, for people who had really tight grip, that's exactly what it feels like. It's, it's really, it, it's, it's great and it's ribbed. So it's not slickery. And um, yeah, it just works and, really well. And again, this is just a slide on, we've enhanced all of our packaging. So it's lighter, less plastic. We are using a, um, it's, it's free of DEHP, DEHP um, 
and phthalates, which is important, all of our products. Um, so yeah, just we're, we're really focused on that, like I said earlier. And then lastly, we do have those leg bags. And I just want to point out with the leg bags that um, they are ventilated um, and the material of the bag itself um, sits comfortably on the skin. Some of the other bags on the market um, can be irritating on the skin and they can, um, because they're not ventilated, they, they create like a sweat up against your leg. Um, and then we also have these, these straps that are, um, I'm sorry, what's the word I'm looking for? They, they're they cloth. Yeah, they're cloth, but they also, um, have, uh, they're rubber and they, they're like adjustable is the word I was looking for. Yeah. I'm like, you, I can't think of my words. Um, they're adjustable. So instead of like a Velcro, sometimes the Velcro scrooch straps, like if they're sitting wrong, that Velcro can irritate the skin. Ours are very comfortable and they hook right onto the bag and they're easy to adjust by pulling on them. Yeah, so that um, little green hook hooks here and this then this strap goes around and then the other side hooks here. And then the tubing itself is also slightly oval. So it sits flat on the skin. It doesn't roll back and forth. Um, and then if you see that blue valve on the bottom, is not a turn knob, it's a flip valve. And why that's really nice is, I think Bard makes a leg bag with um, with a screw kind of like turn piece that's, it's harder to adjust, but it sometimes can leak. Oh, Ours, right, yeah, definitely. A lot of times it leaks actually, yeah. and it's, you know, odor, the discomfort. So we have a really nice leg bag. If you guys want any samples of that, um, we can certainly get you those. Lastly, I wanna move on to our Secure Start program and talk a little bit about that. But before we do, for those that have to get off, I just wanna be cautious of the time. It is uh, just after four here. Um, we are gonna be at the Abilities Expo this weekend. I don't know if anybody's going to that. I know there was some people in the area. Um, we'll be there. So if you wanna come by our table, we have a booth at Hollister. Um, and then for those that like are in different parts of the country, I know somebody mentioned that they had called into Secure Start. We have the website right here. We also have a phone number that's not on this slide. I think it's on the last slide. It's on the last slide. Okay. Um, you can go right to that last slide. I'm just gonna super quickly just talk through this and you guys can jot this down and, and we can also follow up with, um, Gina, can we share the slides or no, we're not able to? Uh, no, we are not able to. Okay. Um, well, I will follow let me up. check. If let me not check. the slides, I will follow up with some brochures and at least this Secure Start. Yeah, we could probably of... email the, um, like the Secure Start literature, like that little page with all the contact info and then maybe a product yeah. catalog. Just so you guys have something, like if you have any questions after this, um, you know, this meeting, I just want you to have some reference points. So, but really quick, Secure Start, in a nutshell, what it is, is um, it's a free patient support service. You can join today on your own. You can, your clinician can enroll you. And um, basically we can help you with a number of different things, um, getting different product samples. Um, we can help educate you on your rights and what um, different suppliers. We can help get you connected with a supplier. If your supplier is telling you they can't get you a product, there's most likely a supplier that can. Um, a lot of times what these suppliers, one might be contracted with an insurance and another one isn't. And so while they can't get it for you, there could be another supplier who could. And so for you, if you really want a product, as long as you're okay switching the supplier, which you know um, is up to you, then we should be able to help get you one of our products. Um, and then lastly, uh, we provide educational resources. So we have a lot, we have partnerships with um, the United Spinal Association, which I know Paul mm -hmm. is going out to represent tonight and be a part of the um, New York City. Yeah, Paul, we partying together. Oh, yeah. Just down to that. I'm looking forward to it. They're going <laughs> to a comedy, um, comedy show tonight and um, so we have different education, you know, that's supported by them and this really nice sexuality booklet. And um, and then our staff in Secure Start, because we're so focused on spinal cord, they know they, they know your world. And so they, we can really help guide you with certain questions. And we also have nurses and clinicians on, um, on hand on support as well. So um, I think that's really it. Anything else that you guys wanna add? And then I wanna open it up to a Q and A. 
I want to make sure that everyone knows too that you can join Secure Start Services and not be in a Hollister product, but you can get all of the benefits of the clinicians that you can call. You can get the resources. You don't have to be in a Hollister product to be a part of Secure Start Services. And Do you any have any questions for us? I'm going to stop sharing here. Um, if anyone does have any follow up questions, everyone here knows that they can reach me directly at our wow email. Um, and Erica, I know you said you were going to send me, or Gina is going to send me the slides. So for anyone who might have missed something, you'll have that. Uh, I'll just put my email into the chat as well. So if anybody wants to email me personally, if you have any questions, like I said, since I am a clinician, um, I'm a nurse practitioner in neurology. So if you had any questions, I'm more than happy to help you too. Um, Can I ask a question? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, with the Vapor Pro catheters, whether they have the the bag or they they don't have the bag, you said that they go into the urethra. That little piece is that mm -hmm. wider than it, the the French of the catheter? Barely. It's just okay. it it's just enough that the catheter can go through it, but it's okay. very soft, plastic. Um, there's petals on the end that the catheter goes through. And as a clinician, you know, the first time I saw it, I was super worried that it would be hard or uncomfortable for the patient. And it's super soft and okay. no one has complaint has had complaints about the introducer tip. And, and it is, I assume, like uh, latex free. Correct. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I'm interested in yeah. Natalie, I want to thank you so much for asking us to be a part of this today. Um, we're always so happy to help educate and share our products with everyone. So thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. I'm really glad I learned something new. So good. Yeah. All right, ladies, so I'll be sharing the slides. I'll share the looks, recording on the website and um, everyone has the central- Looks like there's one more question. Michalina? Oh, does she? Yeah, hands up. Oh, missed it. Yes. Um, my name is Michalina Herrard. I'm a T12L1 complete. I've been using your product now for a while. And one of the thing is when I started, it was going fine. But now when I try to introduce, I always keep missing the spot. So I go back into wiping everything and then trying to redo it. So now I do it without using the tick because so I keep missing the space without me using a uh, Mirror. So you're you're having troubles getting the introducer tip into the urethra? Yes. And do you have the catheter partially in the tip? Or do you have it completely outside the tip when you were using completely the tip? Completely outside. Okay. You want to have the catheter partway in the tip to give it a little bit more stability. And then you should be able to do it without putting the catheter through the tip. Because if you put it through the tip, you're losing all of the benefits of that protective tip. Mm -hmm. okay. But try that. Try pushing it like halfway into the into the introducer tip. Yeah, and um, Miguelina and, and maybe Gina, you can add to this. But one tip that I have had other clinicians more, because I don't talk as much with the end users, but they will put one finger in the vagina hole just slightly and go about a half a centimeter above that and try to introduce it there is that is that accurate gina yes i mean i would do it as i was trying to find but whenever you're doing it yourself sometimes it's hard to 
spread apart the labia and get a finger in. But here you can see that the the tip is completely out of the, you know, the catheter is completely out of the tip. What I want you to do is put it partially in so you can see that it gives it more stability and it's firmer. Mm -hmm. When it's out, it's a little more flexible. So put it right halfway through. Can you okay. see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, try that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right. I think we're uh, all good. Anybody think of any more questions, you can send them to our email and I'll be uh, putting the recording up on the website and sending the slides via email to everyone who attended, okay? Yeah. So Thanks. much. Bye, Thank everybody. You. Have Thank a great you. rest of your day. Thank you yeah, so thanks. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.